A month ago, I ran a poll asking people what they thought of Game of Thrones Season 6. My theory was that the reception of Season 6, especially after the end of the show, was pretty mixed. And we can see from the poll results that it's a little split, despite there being a majority for good. For the aim of the video, I wanted to analyze the season as a whole and determine where I think it would fall on the spectrum and why the season is so mixed. So first, let's look at the disparity in the quality of writing within Season 6. And what I mean by this is that from scene to scene, or even in the same scene, the quality of writing drastically changes. We can have genuinely good moments that are immediately followed by horrible moments. The best way to illustrate this point is by obviously showing examples. I won't pull from the most popular moments from the season, so instead we'll look at some normal scenes throughout some of the episodes. So the first example I have happens within the same scene where Theon supports Yara's claim to the Salt Throne. I think this was a pretty good moment because it acts as a fulfilling character arc for Theon's redemption and how he betrayed Yara in Season 3. It's overall very wholesome and gives us some long-awaited payoff between these two characters. But then, the scene is ruined when it's followed by a horrendous appearance by Euron Greyjoy. He basically comes in blurring a bunch of annoying nonsense. Funnily enough, he admits to even killing Balon Greyjoy, and for some reason, nobody cares. Not a single person was loyal to him? Then, when Theon raises this good argument... You weren't here. Last I heard, you were gallivanting around the world, having a grand old time. Euron replies with a cock joke. That's the sort of thing you start to say once your dick gets chopped off. <laughs> and after that, it just evolves into Euron spouting more cock jokes. You even heard you have no cock. <laughs> and give it to Daenerys Targaryen, along with my big cock. <laughs> wow, this is hilarious, David and Dan. You really know how to introduce and create a compelling villain. Magnificent job. It's just jarring how the scene's quality subsided so quickly and how the writing took an immediate nosedive. For another example, I'll pull two back-to-back -back scenes that differ greatly in quality. The first one is Cersei and Jaime grieving over the loss of Marcella. The opening of the scene is outstanding, with a slow push on Cersei as she slowly starts to realize that her daughter is dead. It's a great shot showing Cersei's evolution that then leads into her and Jaime's grief. Also, this scene isn't just them grieving because that would fundamentally be boring, but it also re-establishes Cersei and Jaime's compelling relationship. That, and Cersei spills the beans on her believing the prophecy about her children, which warrants a cool reaction from Jaime. It's a shame that we didn't get a scene like this when Tommen died, Cersei's last son, but that's a little off topic. This scene is then followed by Varys and Tyrion having a stroll through Marine. And why is this scene so bad, you may ask? Because the dialogue that David and Dan write for these two characters is atrocious. Because you have no cock. These are the two smartest characters in the show, and their dialogue devolves into childish jokes. Are you kidding me? Then David and Dan make a joke where Tyrion seems as though he's trying to eat a baby? <coughs> this entire scene adds practically nothing to the beginning episode, and the only revelation is that the Sons of the Harpy are still terrorizing Marine, which could have been disclosed in some random dialogue scene. But from these examples, I start to see multiple trends for Season 6. Since David and Dan are running out of source material, they were apparently only supplied an outline for the Winds of Winter. Now, as to how developed that outline is, is a mystery. So the only explanation for the disparity in writing I can think of would be David and Dan cherry-picking good lines of dialogue and moments from the outline and then adding in their own material. Because this inconsistency is so jarring to the point of where I don't know whether to like or dislike some of the episodes. We can have Tyrion in one scene again making a cock joke, and then he immediately turns around and gives us a witty line. It just seems as though David and Dan are playing fill in the blank, and each blank they fill in is garbage. Like an example of a massive filler type scene is the play in Bravos that Arya watches. This feels like some weird deleted scene that should have been cut out, but ironically, David and Dan double down and decide to give us two play scenes. To give some context for this scene, Arya is supposed to be observing this girl, her target, since she's proving herself to be a faceless assassin, but she ends up watching the entirety of the play multiple times. Like, why are we spending so much time here, David and Dan? Oh yeah, comedy. Oh no! Also, on an unrelated note, it's driving me crazy that a random play in Bravos includes Tyrion and its recap of events, but the Song of Ice and Fire book, being written at the end of Season 8, 
doesn't include Tyrion. Now that's pretty wild. But to conclude this point for season 6, every episode is filled with both terrible and good moments, to the point of where the inconsistency of quality hurts each episode. It's easy to forget about some of the bad scenes and moments after not watching the season for a while and only remembering the best. But there is quite a bit of garbage you have to wade through to get to the good moments of the season. A part of why season 6 comes across as being outstanding or good is that every subplot has some form of big payoff. This inherently increases the enjoyment factor of the season because we are getting epic resolutions to plotlines that have been building for several seasons. This is in large part a thank you to season 5 because that season did a lot of build up for season 6 and because of that, season 5 was mediocre because of all that build up. Some examples include boring plotlines like Ramsay torturing Sansa, which fuels the Battle of the Bastards, Daenerys dealing with the Sons of the Harpy, which builds to their defeat in Season 6, and another one being Cersei having a feud with the Sparrows, which is paid off with the Great Sept Explosion. If you were to take away the payoff of Season 6, it would become more mediocre like Season 5, but with more bad scenes. However, that's not the case, so let's look at some of the payoff for Season 6 and see if it's actually good. The main example that annoys me the most that can definitely be improved is Arya's payoff of becoming a faceless assassin. This gets thrown into motion when the Waif is sent after Arya for not killing the actress. For this initial moment where the Waif stabs Arya, I listed it as being the 9th stupidest moment in the show for my top 25 most stupid moments in Game of Thrones video. This whole sequence is packed to the brim with abundant plot armor, plot conveniences, and an underwhelming end to the Bravo's faceless assassin storyline. Also, this is a plotline in which the buildup was mainly Arya sitting around doing nothing like washing bodies and doing chores. So, we waited through two seasons to watch Arya kill the Waif off screen, tell off Jacken who never comes back, and then she kills Walder Frey, which was a good scene but that was the last time she uses her powers. This overall payoff for Arya is underwhelming. It also sucks because conceptually this is one of the coolest subplots which in essence is about assassins wearing the masks of other people, and it is somehow one of the least interesting subplots of the season. This is primarily because David and Dan barely do anything with this concept, and the climax is just a generic chase through a city. The only interesting thing that was done in Season 6 with Arya was her using her powers to kill Walder Frey, but again, that most likely came from George R. R. Martin's roadmap. And even its execution was very rushed given that Arya was in Bravos at the end of Episode 8, and somehow made it to the Twins by Episode 10. So, before looking at another example of payoff, I know there are some really good instances like the Battle of the Bastards and the Great Sept Explosion, but I wanted to analyze those two sequences as a separate point at the end of the video because they are what is regarded as two very memorable moments in Game of Thrones. But going back to the payoff of other plotlines, we have Daenerys defeating the Sons of the Harpy. And yet again, this is another very underwhelming ending for a plotline that has been built up to for three seasons. The ending just consists of Dany coming back with her dragons and destroying one ship, and the enemy giving up. That's really it, it lasted about 5 minutes. It was overall a very lousy fight, if you can even call it a fight, and it made all the build up seem like a waste of time. Because of this, the Sons of the Harpy plotline is even more unbearable to watch since it's really not worth it in the end. The three master villains are completely underdeveloped and barely have any screen time, so it makes Daenerys' victory seem even less satisfactory. To compare this with the High Sparrow, he has a lot more builds up and through many different scenes, we learn how manipulative he can be, which thus makes him a more menacing villain. Not just some two-dimensional slave traders. And Daenerys has already freed the slaves, so that leaves the Masters as the only remaining obstacle in her plotline, and as an obstacle to overcome, they were just really boring. It's very apparent that this resolution is completely overshadowed by the Battle of the Bastards, given that they are in the same episode. It just feels like a betrayal to Daenerys' plotline to handle her three season arc victory in just about five minutes. I know she's technically really powerful and she can end the fight quickly, but having the enemy give up immediately is just boring. Have the masters be more arrogant and stubborn in stopping their attack, so that Daenerys can have an even bigger slam dunk on them. This would at least create a more satisfactory outcome because we would see Daenerys' full strength at play. But in the scene's current state, it just felt like Daenerys was going easy on them unfortunately. In terms of all the other payoff in the season, it was pretty good. The reveal that Jon Snow was a Targaryen through the Tower of Joy, 
Sansa getting her revenge, Sam starting his path of becoming a macer are all very enjoyable. However, the two other big portions of payoff with Arya and Daenerys are so underwhelming that it leads to the season being more mixed. So, taking a break from talking about some of the payoff and plot lines, I want to look at an aspect that isn't discussed a lot, which is the cinematography. For season 6, I think it looks the most beautiful out of the whole show. Whenever I think of Game of Thrones, this season stands out the most in terms of visuals. This could be attributed to the season getting a higher budget, which was an increase to 10 million per episode when it used to be 6 to 8 million. This does allow for sequences in the show that would otherwise not be possible to achieve with a smaller budget. The main one being the Battle of the Bastards and how epic the cinematography was in that episode. This singular shot of Jon Snow facing off the horde of the enemy is stunning. The zoomed in nature of the shot giving the illusion of the horses being closer than they actually are. The great perspective and juxtaposition of Jon versing the whole army. And the overall shot composition is perfect. And this is just one frame from an episode that is packed full with awe-inspiring visuals. Even this long take tracking shot of Jon Snow fighting his way through the battlefield is something we've never really seen before, especially for a TV show. This outstanding cinematography significantly boosts the quality of the episode, given that it's so visually appealing. Even though the Battle of the Bastards is flawed, which I'll get into later, it's overwhelmingly uplifted by magnificent visuals. It's kind of like the concept of a polished turd, but Battle of the Bastards is by no means a turd, so it's like a good scene that's polished to become even better and more memorable. And this is just an example of the cinematography in regards to the main action set piece of the season, but the actual cinematography during normal dramatic scenes is still breathtaking most of the time. Even during this scene where Ser Jorah is saying goodbye to Daenerys, the cinematography still knocks it out of the park. The smooth, creamy, shallow focus of these medium shots for Daenerys and Ser Jorah creates an aura of warm intimacy between them. For me, this elevates the emotional punch of the scene, and it gets even better when the scene progresses further, and we transition to close-ups to capture the more detailed emotions. Any shot here looks like a painting, and the color palette is so satisfying. And this basically applies to almost any dialogue scene in the season. Another example being Kinvara talking to Varys. This utilizes the same techniques I highlighted previously, but I think the blocking and shot composition in this scene has a subtle and powerful impact. Throughout the scene, Varys was criticizing the Red Priests, and when Kinvara brings up Varys' past, the power dynamic shifts to Kinvara. This is emphasized visually when she steps closer to the frame, and it seems as though she overpowers Varys despite her being physically lower on the staircase. This is a very chilling scene that is boosted by the cinematography and obviously the great acting. To give one more supporting point as to why I think season 6 has the best cinematography, I want to compare two different scenes from separate seasons that are in the same location. For this example, we'll be looking at two scenes from Winterfell that take place in season 5 and 6. Right away, you can see that the lighting is a lot better in season 6, or it's more thought out in terms of where the actors would be in relation to the lighting. For season 5, some characters like Roose Bolton are not even lit properly, and the main light source is hitting his hands. In comparison to season 6, where each character generally has a bright light on them creating a nice contrast, or the light is behind the character and it creates a highlight around their portraits. These shots are definitely better than the ones in season 5, and I personally like the color correction more in season 6 given that the saturation seems a bit higher. But overall, since the cinematography is so great in season 6, I think it elevates the appeal of the season as a whole, despite some scenes or moments being genuinely bad. So, for the final point of the video, I wanted to analyze the two most memorable sequences from the season, and those are the Battle of the Bastards and the Great Sept Explosion. So first, let's look at the Battle of the Bastards. So as I said earlier in the video, this is undoubtedly a great action set piece that is uplifted by gorgeous cinematography. However, I think there is one essential flaw that hurts the sequence, which is how devoid of logic it is. First of all, Jon Snow is beefed the hell up with plot armor. The fact that he survived running into Ramsay's trap, survived eight archer barrages, a cavalry charge, swarmed by enemies, and even smothered by his own allies is crazy. At the very least, he should have gotten some injuries from the battle, but he comes out unscathed. Uh, you're right, I was luckier than most. 
I find it funny that one run-in with Egret is more deadly than running face first into thousands of soldiers. Now the reason why this use of plot armor is so heartbreaking is that it goes against the very nature of what Game of Thrones used to be, a show that had consequences for characters making mistakes. For Battle of the Bastards, Jon Snow should have died given that he played into Ramsay's trap. Imagine if Robb Stark miraculously got saved during the Red Wedding, it would just feel cheap. Instead, David and Dan structured the episode to include a deus ex machina in which Sansa saves the day with the veil. And this also raises another point that doesn't make sense, in that Sansa intentionally withheld the information that she had the support of the Vale for practically no reason. I would have told you not to attack Winterfell until we had a larger force, or is that obvious When too? will we have a larger force? We've pleaded with every house that'll have us. She was just going to let Jon die, potentially because she didn't trust him or something? Like what? I think this whole scenario is one of the most stupid events in the show, and it feels as though David and Dan wanted to limit Jon Snow's side to make it seem as though he was the underdog. In actuality, if this show made sense in the moment, Jon Snow should have rolled through Ramsay's army if he had access to the Vale from the beginning instead of them coming in later. So in general, the Battle of the Bastards sacrifices logic for epic spectacle. However, they could still have epic spectacle if David and Dan did a better job with the writing. So going on to the next sequence, we have the Great Sept Explosion. There is a lot about this sequence that is great, but I think it misses a core aspect of storytelling, and that is again, a lack of consequence. As a self-contained sequence, it's pretty good. But you have to look at the larger picture given that this is a long-running series. As an example, a part of why the Red Wedding was so memorable was obviously the heartbreaking twist, and the impact it had on the world after the event took place. Everyone the episode after was talking about the Red Wedding, but who was really talking about the Great Sept Explosion after it happened? Do all the citizens of King's Landing just not care anymore? What happened to the importance of this line that was set up in the same season? Every one of us is poor and powerless. And yet together, we can overthrow an empire. The only scene we got as a result of the Great Sept Explosion was a few brief mentions from different characters and Jaime being mad at Cersei, but that wore off pretty quickly. So imagine if the Red Wedding had the same treatment in terms of the story afterwards. Instead of the North Remembers, it would basically be the North Forgets. There would be no lasting impact, and it would feel as though it wouldn't matter that much besides just ending a plotline. So, as it stands, the Great Sept Explosion acts as a means to only move Cersei to the Queen position of the Seven Kingdoms, and to delete a bunch of characters that will no longer be relevant to the story. This is the main negative aspect about this sequence, but there is obviously a lot of great aspects about it. I think by far the best aspect is the music. Ram and Nijawadi really carries the scene, and it wouldn't be the same without the Trial of the Seven track. It also helps that David and Dan barely include any dialogue in this sequence given that that's normally their worst contribution. But since there's barely any dialogue, this allows the cinematography and score to carry the sequence into the S tier status. Also, the pacing of this whole sequence perfectly complements the music and creates some outstanding synergy. That slow ramp into the climax as the characters realize what's about to happen gives you chills every time. Overall, it's an awesome sequence that is unfortunately brought down by bad follow-up later on in the show. If Game of Thrones ended after Season 6, then the Great Sept Explosion would practically be perfect. But as it stands, I think it's pretty good and not utter perfection as some people may say. So with these two great sequences that are somewhat flawed, the appealing cinematography, payoff that is hit or miss, and the disparity in quality of writing puts this season in a more mixed reception. Because of this, I think Season 6 belongs around the area of good and okay. There are qualities that elevate this above the season being trash, however, there are aspects that bring the season down from it being outstanding. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, I made other video essays on Season 1, 4, and 5. And for the next one, I'll be looking at Season 7 and where it goes wrong. Have a good day, and let me know what you think about Season 6 in the comments.